Let's take a look at the Google Cloud Console. I'm going to start by going to console.cloud.google.com, and you can see here this is what we're going to. Uh, we're, this is the user interface when we actually first open Google Cloud Console. Now I'm going to go up to the top left. If I have a project selected and everything else is set up here, I can look at all of the different products available. Now you you may have some pinned products, you may not, uh, but. Probably since we're going to be working with BigQuery, let's go ahead and pin BigQuery. So we're going to click on more products on the left. We're going to scroll down all the way to, down past uh, storage, which is not where BigQuery is, past databases, which is not where BigQuery is, past operations, uh, past tools, and in analytics where we'll see BigQuery. Now, if we click this little pin, this is going to mean that now when we open up this menu uh, in the future, we can see BigQuery uh, toward the top. Um, so. There we go. There's BigQuery right there. Uh, so BigQuery is now at the top, and I can click on BigQuery, and I can get into my uh, my workspace here. So this is nice because now you can kind of see I've got a, a UI. I've got different things I can. Let's let's close all of this out for now. We don't need any of that. Uh, but I've got a user interface that allows me to see different options on the left, and then I can kind of explore data in the middle panel here. Now we don't have a ton of of room, so we're we're going to go ahead and close this left pane. We're just gonna we're gonna hide it. So we're gonna click that little button and that'll make that go off to the side. And then we're going to have uh, our public data that we can take a look at and we're looking at Austin Bike Share right now. So I can click this little button at the top to compose a new query. And uh, this is nice, you know, because I can I can now edit and I can I can change things around here. So if I type select star from, and I don't actually have to type in the big long, uh, the name of this table. I can actually just click on the snowman here and I can copy that ID and then I can paste that into my uh, query. So th that's nice. I don't have to think s so much about how typing all of that out. Uh, and let's limit this to 100 and take a look at what this looks like. So you can see now, pretty quickly, I get results in the bottom, and there's going to be, a, uh, you know, it looks like we have uh, two pages of, of results. So I've got 100 results here. and I can change that to a single page if I want to see 100, pa 100 results at once. And we can see all of these columns. So we have a station ID, we have a name, we have a status for that station, uh, we have an address for that station, and then maybe some more, you know, like typically in a data warehouse, you're going to see a lot of columns where, you know, maybe there's not populated data. Uh, and, you know, maybe council district, other things that we might care about here. Now, if we want to see the same thing for um, our uh, bike share trips, then we can just delete the from, and we're going to hit the snowman again, and we're going to, you know, we can actually, instead of hitting that copy ID and pasting, we can just hit query directly. Uh, there we go, and now we can see here, select star from, and that's going to allow us to, uh, to, to construct a query and now we're limiting to 1,000. That's kind of the default for this. But uh, there's actually a lot more trips, so maybe, maybe seeing a more data is better. So you can see we have a trip ID. We have a subscriber type. Uh, we have bike IDs, you know, and you can kind of see all the different bikes that are there. We have a start time for our trip. Uh, we have a start station, start station name. You know, we can we can explore a lot of different uh, data points there. A lot of uh, different, um, a lot of different columns. So let let's close this one. We'll, we'll get rid of this query. We'll come back to our, our original query here, and uh, let's let's take a little bit further of a look at this subscriber type field. So. Um, and this is station data. So if we, uh, you know, let, let me go ahead and I'm going to open up this bike share trips. Uh, and I can actually move this off to the right uh, after, or when, after I create a, a, a query here. So, or I can move it off to the right or left. Let's split that off to the left because this is going to give us the ability to do some pointing and clicking, which is going to be nice. So select, uh, I'm going to pick, um, let's see here, this is bike share trips. So subscriber type from. Uh, and then if I want that, uh, you know, we'll, we'll go ahead and copy that ID from the BigQuery public data dot Austin bike share dot bike share trips. And uh, then we're going to group by and then subscriber type again. So we can just click on that and hit enter. And now this, this allows me to kind of see what are all the different subscriber types. So by grouping this, I'm only getting a, a per one particular value. This is kind of giving me unique values. And you can see there are 77 different subscriber types. Now, we don't have to do it this way. We can actually do select distinct subscriber type. And that will allow us to uh, eliminate that group by. And then we can kind of see the different subscriber types. And if we want to see these in any particular order, you know, here we could just uh, enter or order by subscriber type. And then we can see, you know, that, you know, how does that, you know, in an order, you know, but, uh, you know, this, lot, lots of tools will allow you to kind of order that directly, you know, in your output.
So I can see a couple of different out, uh, subscriber types. This might be useful data. I might, I might want to make a note of this or kind of look at, you know, eh, there's 77 options. Maybe some of these are different types. Maybe I can group some of those types. Um, you know, I might have to think about how that data works together or is similar when I actually get into further uh, details here. But right now we're just kind of exploring this data. So let's take a look at the station addresses. So let's say we want to see the stations now. So select. Uh, let's let's click on the stations and we'll, we'll move this over to the left pane uh, and uh, we got a, a big mess of, of, uh, of different things here so let, let's go ahead and, and try to clean up our UI a little bit we'll close this one there we go we'll close it we don't need any of that work uh, we'll, we'll, we'll try to bring this one up into the left pane here can we get that in the left pane uh, let's move that to the left pane and then we'll create a new query and we'll move this to the right pane there we go Okay, so now we're going to select, let's say, name and address from, and then we can get this, uh, you know, we can get the station addresses. So uh, let's say bike stations, we'll, we'll copy that ID and, uh, you know, let, let's limit to 100. So we can see, you know, name and address. And now we've kind of limited the data in a way that might make it a little bit easier for us to take a look at or to explore a little bit. Okay, so um, what if we want to actually see, you know, the, the, you know, the stations for our trips? You know, we might want to actually try to combine, uh, you know, some of this information from our trips. So, you know, we might want to do a join here. I know I said in the previous uh, presentation that we probably didn't need to do a join, but let's go ahead and change this so that we can uh, do a, a quick join. So we'll, uh, we'll, we'll get the trips table here and we'll call that BT. So this is called an alias. This allows us to alias the table so that every time we refer to it, we don't have to type everything out. That would take forever. So SQL al or aliases in SQL are pretty common. Uh, and then we're going we're gonna to use where to join this. So we'll say BS uh, dot station ID. So this is uh, station ID equals. Uh, and then in the trips, we'll say BT bike trips dot start station ID okay and now if we uh, if we do this um, let's see here oh we need a comma uh, BT dot start station I oh, see I forgot my period there we go so now what we're doing is we're saying let's get name and address and we're gonna start matching these things up so uh, name and address there we go so name and address so that that's kind of interesting you know that, that that's nice maybe we want to limit this to maybe uh, you know we want to limit this to only trips at a particular time of the day so maybe uh, and um, you know, we could do uh, bt dot start time, but we can't actually start there. We need it. We need a function to extract that time. So we're going to extract hour from bt dot start time, and we want to say where that's 13. So one o'clock, 1 p.m. Now we should be able to get the name and address of all of the stations that we're getting at 1 p.m., which is kind of a start. But you know, maybe we want to look at the start and end stations for each one of these. So um, we're going to actually need to join another table into this. So we'll say we're going to copy this uh, this uh, stations table because we're going to use it twice. We're going to say uh, bug station start, bike station end. So we'll use a nice short alias for this, and then we're going to change the columns that we're working with. Uh, we'll say barks, or bike station start name as start station name, bike station address as start station address. Uh, we'll use BSE name as end station name and BSE address as end station address. Let's get that to be an underscore. There we go. And then let's also get the minutes. We might as well see how long this is. So duration minutes. Uh, and we could get that you know, from the trip by clicking duration minutes, or we can just type it. Uh, OK. So now the only thing we have to do is we have to actually add in, or we have to change these. So uh, BSS is equal to BT start station ID and BSE station ID is equal to uh, bt dot end station ID and we run this so here, here's a problem we're gonna run into which is kinda strange but for some reason uh, the the types here don't match up and if we look at this 
Uh, start station ID is an integer. Uh, end station ID is a string for some reason. And if we take a look at the uh, the bike share data, um, you know, station ID is an integer. So that's kind of a strange thing. Um, not sure why they, they changed it that way, but uh, we can just cast this. So we can we can convert it cast, uh, and we can use as int six four, which is going to be our type. Now there's cast and there's also safe cast, and casting will work, but sometimes you're going to run into a problem where that particular data type doesn't doesn't translate well. So safe cast will allow us to avoid any errors associated with that. Now if we execute this query, uh, we should be able to see the start station name, the start station address, the end station name, end station address, and how long it takes. So this is kind of interesting because now we could start to do you know, interesting analysis around well, how long does it take to get from station to station and what's kind of normal and what other factors might be, uh, might be influencing there. You know, so if we want to create another query here, you know, if we just want to see like how long does it take, like how long do the trips take, we could just use uh, one of those SQL functions like SQL or select average duration minutes as average trip from and then let's get the trips here. So we're gonna we're gonna use we're gonna copy that because that's a lot to, to type in. Um, where and, let, and if we want to see what how long it takes to get places, uh, extract hour from start time. Uh, let's say we'll, we'll do one o'clock again. So we can kind of see, uh, and we don't have to limit because we, because we only selected one average here. So 29, 29 minutes. Well, people at one o'clock are taking trips at about a half an hour. But we could also see, you know, at, at 6 a.m., what's the average duration? Well, it's a little bit shorter at 6 a.m. Uh, at 9 a.m., so even shorter, you know, I think probably 11, uh, 11 a.m. is going to be you know, about the same. And if we looked at 11 p.m., you could see here. Uh, okay, so it's a little bit longer, people taking longer trips, uh, you know, I wonder at 2 a.m., how, how long is a trip at 2 a.m.? Uh, people are going a long way at, at 2 a.m. in Austin. So, uh, you know, probably uh, see a lot of, uh, well, you might not see a lot of bikers, but you see bikers traveling all, for a long time at 2 a.m. in Austin. Um, so we could actually take some of that information back to our original query here. If we want to see, you know, like what's the average duration per tip, per trip, uh, you know, let's just say we'll look at uh, this, the, the start and end station name. We'll, we'll skip out on address for this one. And we can see average, uh, you know, duration minutes as, and we can change the name of this column, average duration. Um, so now everything else should be the same, and we'll, uh, we have to add a group by. So we'll group by bse.name and uh, bs, or let's say bss.name and bse.name. And now we can take a look at this. Uh, you know, we can see start station to end station uh, takes about 26 minutes to get there. You know, and if we, you know, we could even, you know, throw in an order by uh, if we wanted to to, to kind of see like, well, how long does it take to get from place to place? Um, I believe we could even do order by uh, average duration. Let's see if that'll work. Oh, that's fun. So now we can get all of all of the different 6,080 unique trips, and we can see how long it takes uh, on average to get for each one of these. Probably some of these two and three minute trips, you could see that uh, you know it's probably somebody just picking up, maybe changing their mind. But uh, if we want to see what these look like descending, we can hit DSC and see what all of these are. You know, so some of these are really long trips. Uh, 2,530 minutes. That's that's a really long trip. Um, that's uh, that's probably more than a day. Uh, so that, that that's quite a bit. You know, it probably a mistake there. Somebody kept a bike overnight. I don't know, but you could kind of look at what each one of these trips takes on average. Um, and, and you know, we're not really getting into building a model yet. We're really just getting into exploring this data. We're going to start poking around in it. Before we get that far, um, sometimes the problem that we need to solve can be solved without even trying to uh, to build a model. Sometimes the, the application need that we have might just be an uh, estimate or an average or something else. So we can take a look at all of these things by just exploring our data. And we'll need to do that you know, if we want to put together uh, sensible models and, and really solve the problems necessary for our applications. Hopefully this will help you to get into BigQuery a little bit and understand the tools a little bit more. Uh, and hopefully you can, uh, you can start building your own queries. Thank you for watching.